In this video, we're going to UV map and texture the geometry we created in the last video and also sculpt it a little more to give the fish some roundness and depth. All right, now that most of the geometry is laid in, it's time to texture it. So we select all these layers, these objects here, and we can we can apply texture to it if we want right now. Assign existing material and fish color reference. And as you can see, nothing is quite working. Oh, there's one other thing we should do first as well, is select all the vertices. And I want to just make sure there's no holes in it, because usually when I do this manually, like constructing one polygon at a time, I often get an, a few polygons that I miss that aren't connected properly. So I'm just using this tool right here, and, and this essentially merges uh, vertices that are in really close proximity to one another. It doesn't always work well though, especially if you have like high detail areas like mouths or eyes. If there's really close uh, polygons together, you don't want merging. Sometimes you have to go in there and, and reset them to change the values a bit. Uh, this is also a really good time to make sure that everything's looking okay, which I think it looks good. The way I create the UV map is actually by selecting everything, including this square and re-UV mapping it. I want the UV map to scale to this square since that's what we scaled all of the polygons to. And because we made everything with the actual ratio of the texture map in mind, this should automatically work. And I'm going to go to Create UVs, Planner Mapping. And I want to do it on the Y axis because I wanted to do it up and down. And then Apply and everything should automatically fit. So now what we should have is when I select this, we can just Let's just hide this guy here. You should see that we have all of our pieces texture mapped the way we want them, and everything's working quite nicely. We can, uh, we can of course, adjust things further. Now, the, the one thing I, I want to fix here really quickly is the eye. So let's just go here, and I'm going to open up uh, in this panel here my um, UV texture editor so we can see the texture that we're working with. And what I'm going to do is duplicate this geometry and I might actually also just grab these UVs here and recenter this slightly because the eye is kind of out of center and that's my fault from when I actually did the painting okay and then so what I'm going to do now is I want to duplicate this and I actually want to grab I'm just gonna move this off to the side here and let's just select the UVs for this and I'm going to move this these UVs up here because I want this to be the shiny part of the eye. And once we get the alpha mat maps working properly, what we'll be able to do is take take this shiny part and just put it over top of this eye here and have it slightly larger. We can just snap it to the center. So we want to display a local rotation axis. And with that displayed, what I can do is actually snap this object to that rotation axis. So now when we scale it up, it'll be exactly centered and it'll be right over top of that. But we're not going to do that for now. So I'm going to just hide that, display, transform display, look over, rotate, just turn that off. I'm actually going to create a, a little button. I think I'm going to call it LRT. Oh, there it is, local rotation axis. I've already made one, but I'll show you how to do it right now. If you just go to display, control shift, go to transform display, local rotation axis, it'll create a little button for you. And now whenever you press that, it will show that local rotation axis. So the textures are now applied. So the, the next process is actually going to be giving this model a little bit of form, shaping them up a little bit. And one of the things I do is I, I keep my models pretty low res. By pressing 3, I set it to smoothed out mode. Now, depending on the software application you're using, there may this may not be the way to do it. You can probably use a smooth function. So if you go mesh, smooth, you can smooth the meshes out. But I don't smooth out until after I've finished sculpting the object a little better. So right now everything is flat. And the next step is going to be actually rounding everyone off. All right, so this phase here where we actually start forming the fish can be a little bit tricky. There's a ton of different ways you can go about it. Also with the fins, I want the fins to stay straight down. But anyways, you don't have to be too crazy about it. Remember, this is this is really just augmenting what After Effects would do. If you were in After Effects, first of all, you wouldn't have such a specifically laid out grid. 
and secondly you wouldn't be able to root and deform it that precisely so that's not the goal is not to have a precise fish model the goal is to get a little more form to this thing so that when it's moving in three dimensions it's a little bit more believable so there's a couple different ways you can approach this you can use the sculpt tool actually let's just get the tool pulled up here and just get it to pull out so I think if you just go alt or control it pulls out so you could do it this way where you're actually pulling out the the oops on the y-axis here let's go pull this out you can literally just start pulling things out that way um, another way you could you do it actually let's just increase the strength here so you, you can see how that works right there sort of like a ZBrush thing would work the only problem with this method is you can get really uneven results and then when you try to smooth things so if you try to smooth it it doesn't just smooth things vertically it smooths things horizontally so if I'm trying to smooth out the face for instance it actually like relaxes the mesh in all directions which changes the shape of the face so that can be problematic for me so oftentimes what I'll do is I'll use this really cool thing which is the soft select and just grab a few faces and actually we can just use the paint select to grab the faces let's make sure we're in face mode so I can grab some faces and then I can just define an area of fall off that I want as you can see the areas in yellow here let's just do this the areas in yellow are where it's going to be affected the most so let's go back to the and what I want to do is quit that tool and I want to change the radius and as I increase this you can see what will happen is it will change the way it pulls the shape so we can decrease the radius here and I basically want to decrease it until I'm not including any of those fins at all and I'm really just use, touching the body now what I could ultimately do if I really want to keep those fins flat is remove them off the geometry for now and then just put them back on later which I think I may end up doing but we're it may also not matter if they get deformed a little bit okay so as I pull this up now this face is a little bit of an issue so let's just try to add we'll just add some selections to it and what I could do is just also rotate this like this down but again that's too much so I think what's happening is we've got too much selected so I'm just going to shift select some of these off bring that up a little too much reduce this a little more I can get a little bit finicky I'll just get rid of some of these I just want to right now my first plan here is to get the volume of the fish's body mostly and we can just continue to adjust and refine so I just want to get a bit of a curve on that fish there may be better ways to do this you guys might have better better ideas on how to actually achieve this similar effect so I'm completely open to your thoughts on this um, it's always the part I struggle with a little bit it takes a bit of time messing around to get this to work just right okay and then what I'll do is select along here like that so we've got that bulge so what I maybe do is get this area along here and reduce the volume to three let's bring this up a bit starting to get a little curve in there let's, oops shifts like that bring this up even more so you can see we're starting to get a nice curve it's pretty good not perfect but it's still pretty good okay and eventually once I've got the rough form taken care of here so I'm gonna grab these middle ones here and run along these middles because I want this to to come up more so this I'm really gonna reduce that volume down and bring that up I might even flatten this out so let's grab the scale flatten this down a bit flatten that down bring it up and then I'm going to rotate it down a bit so that the fish the tail terminates now I'm going to reduce the fall off completely and I'm just going to pull this center piece up here 
until we sort of get a rounded edge. And then the last thing I'll do is just grab the vertices along the middle and just pull them up. Just trying to get a curve on that. It's too high. There we go. Now we can also use these the soft select obviously with the vertices, just one set of vertices selected. So if you grab it like this, we increase the radius on that. You get a similar effect. This is with the face, it's just a little less dramatic. So just try to reduce that so we only get what we want. Let me flip this out. So you can get a pretty good curve there. Might flatten that out a bit. So essentially that's this is pretty much the process that I go through to sculpt the form out. I mean, I'm really just trying to get a subtle curve on this. So like from this point, what you could really do is you could start using, so like, let's say for instance, I have this, this sculpted shape. I'm just going to duplicate the one, put it away. And then I'm going to go and start using this sculpting tool and bring its size down a little bit and also reduce the level of the effect. So then I can just gradually start pushing this around a little bit to get what I'm looking for. I'm just going to speed up the video here and brush through it so you can see what I'm doing, but essentially the idea is the same. I'm just pulling out the geometry subtly, brushing over it over and over again until I get the shapes that I want. A lot of modelers would probably be able to do this from the polygon stage and not have to go into this deform tool to pull the character out. I'm not a very good modeler, so I tend to have to, this work, this method works really well for me, especially since I'm following a very exact profile of an existing drawing. The method really does suit the style of the piece. In any other kind of project, it may not work so well. I think I've got enough to just sort of work with. I think around this eye I could do some work. This is also a good time, like if you're doing characters with eyelids, I usually bring the actual eyeball in there at this uh, around this stage, so I'll bring the actual eye in and want to make sure that I'm sculpting the eyelids around the eye properly. And again, there's probably you guys probably all know of a million better ways to do this. I've, I'm not new at modeling, but I'm definitely it is not my strong point. It's not something I've ever been particularly good at. Okay, so now we have this eye. Oops, and eventually. Eyes, fish, I think fish have flat eyes on top. So they move a little weird. Their eyes are a little bit strange. So we'll have to work on that. Actually make it look good. Probably have to put a, some kind of a deformer in there. But I'll have to sculpt this so it also fits well around the eye. So it's, that's why it's important to have the eyeball in there right now so we can start seeing how it's looking. Uh, we, can also, we can also get rid of the wireframe on shaded and it starts to give you an idea of how it's going to look. And you can see that it doesn't matter that the geometry is not perfectly sculpted. Also, once I put three, put the smoothing on it, it actually looks pretty good. And we're starting to get some nice shape. You can even tell there's just some subtlety in the way it moves. You can get a, a sense of the dimension that's happening on that fish, even if there were no lighting at all. Okay, so I'm going to go. I think my next step will be like fixing up this jaw and getting it all working. The head's always a tricky one, but the body, I'd say the body's pretty solid at this point. From this point, I use a combination of vertice selection with the soft select mode enabled and varying the fall off radius, and also using the polygon sculpt tool. Because of the finer details in the face, I often find I have to go in to individual vertices and just move them manually. As you can see, I'm just sort of sculpting the form into the face here just by using the polygon sculpt tool. Another way I could have done this is made a more general form for the face and then push things in. This method is going super flat and then pulling things out. Either way should work fine, though I'm not sure if one way or the other would be faster or more efficient. I think it depends on the model.
At this point, I'm just sculpting the general form of the eye. Eventually, once I, I get a structure that I like, I'm going to go in and snap the vertices, two vertices on the actual eyeball to round everything out and, and make it make it fit more. But for now, it's just a, a general shape, trying to get the dip in the head and the brow area pronounced properly. Now here I've just reduced my brush size on the polygon sculpt tool down very small and I'm pretty much just manually manipulating individual vertices or little tiny groups of them and this is just for fine details and refining things and smoothing out the mesh a little bit. Now at this point the model is generally looking okay and the form's all right so I'm going to start sculpting some of the other pieces and bringing them in using essentially the same techniques. It's not not really any rocket science. There's nothing special about it. So I'm not really sure how much of this stuff you guys even want to see. The rest of this video is pretty much just sculpting out and laying out the pieces of the fish, getting everything into place, and just adding a little bit of form to them. There's nothing really any different than what you've already seen. And I do actually go in and position that eye piece. But other than that, I, it's pretty much the same. So if you want to see where it gets to, just skip to the end of the video and you'll see what all of this amounts to. Because of the limited angle of view that you'll ever have on these characters, I don't really have to be that precise with things. I really try to think of this as an After Effects model in the third dimension with a little extra form to it. I think it's important to keep that in mind because it's really easy for me to start making too much detail and starting to round out the character too much and, and trying to really resolve it. And that's not the, it's not the style, it's not the look, and that just really increases the workload. So it's really important for me to remember that we're not going to be looking inside the fish's mouth. We don't need a whole bunch of moving gills. We don't need all these extra parts and details. Really, it's just about taking what we'd have in After Effects to work with for a 2D puppet and then being able to curve that and distort that a little more to increase the believability of it. At this point, I'm pretty comfortable with where the fish is, so I've deleted the other body, which I kept just in case I ruined something. And now I'm going to move that other eye piece into just on top of the main eye and just scale it up so that, it, that it's exactly over top because that's going to be a shiny bulb that the eye moves inside of. So I'm also increasing the roundness because I want the eye to move inside of it without colliding with the edges. So it's really important that it sits on top of the eye and I've just hidden it away so it's not visible because it's getting in the way and I can't see the where the eye's looking. So the next stage to everything here is just renaming all the polygons. It's really important to name all of your pieces quite clearly. It's definitely extra important in Maya. I always name stuff in After Effects as well as I can. In Maya, it's even more important, especially if you start getting into referring to different objects using expressions or other code. So after they're all named, I start grouping everything together and I, I put it under one, one main geometry shape so that I can rotate the fish and get it looking the way I want, and then I just go through and refine it a little bit. I will end up reworking this model a little bit more as I go, and you'll see after I do some of the joints and the bone setup, we'll, we'll be fixing some things here and there. But it's sort of a continuous process. But other than that, I think the fish is pretty much there. This is the geometry for this guy. In the next video, I'll show you how I go through laying out the bones for this character or the joints and what the skeleton looks like when it's finished. Before we end this video, I just want to remind you that all of the creative content in this tutorial is the property of Takut Productions Incorporated.